So is Leighton being a good little noodle and using this fall break to catch up on all of those group projects and assignments I gotta wrap up before the end of the semester? No, no Leighton is not. Instead, Leighton is going to be making videos about 21 Pilots. Yeah, so today we are going to dive into Morph by 21 Pilots. And several of you recommended that I do this song and I was drawn to it because I feel like a lot of people will like this song. There's a lot of hype around it, but not a lot of people talk about what it means or what it means, at least in terms of lore. I also have a lot of people commenting Levitate, which I think is kind of in the same boat. I don't think a lot of people know where to place this block in this uh, building of lore that we're creating. So hopefully I can add some clarity to the situation and I'll probably make a video on Levitate and I'll probably get into some of their older songs as well because I feel like that's something else that we don't really talk about a lot, but regardless. We are talking about Morph today. And the first line of the song is pretty much very straightforward. Can't stop thinking about if and when I die. For some reason, and this reflects on you guys, not me, because I just listen to the people. I just listen to what the masses tell me and I please the people. You guys always pick the freaky ones about death. I don't know what that says about you as a collective, but here we are. Can't stop thinking about if and when I die, for now I see that if and when are truly different cries. For if is purely panic, and when a solemn sorrow, and one invades today while the other spies tomorrow. So Tyler is setting up these two different scenarios when it comes to death if he dies and when he dies, and both of those scenarios create different feelings. He refers to if you die as purely panic, and the word if creates some uncertainty. You don't know if you're going to die or not, and obviously that causes some panic because you don't want that to happen. On the other hand, when is definite. You just don't know when. It's going to happen, we just don't know when. When you are going to die is obviously much more depressing because it's definite. It's going to happen. Hence why Tyler says solemn sorrow. You know, there's situations you get into where you're thinking that I could die if I die. And those situations are very scary, obviously. But when you think about when I die, there's a lot of more sorrow surrounding it because you're thinking about something that is definite. You're not thinking about in the moment what could happen. Which leads us to the second part here where it says, one invades today while the other spies tomorrow. So the if invades today. Obviously, little dark. I feel like every one of these analysis videos gets a little dark. Every day, something could kill you. There's a situation if I die today. Scary, but could happen. I mean, a meteorite could just fly in and like kill me right now. But not today. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. If is more imminent, that you're in a current situation that could lead to your death. When is in the background, when you die, while the other spies tomorrow. When is the one that spies tomorrow? It's always in the background. It's not up always in the forefront, it's just always hanging out. Not today. We're surrounded and we're hounded. There's no above or under or around it. For above is blind belief and under is sword to sleeve and around is scientific miracle, so let's pick above and see. Again, he's using different words to describe death. We're surrounded and we're hounded. Obviously, all of us have a mortality. All of us are gonna have judgment day. All of us are gonna be six feet under one day. Good Lord, people. Always the dark ones. Someone will die. Um fun and of murder there's, there's no above under or around it this part is creative because it kind of serves as a double meaning the first time that this series of words pops up he's taking it very literally as like forms of direction you can't go above you can't go under you can't go around death we are going to have to confront it one day. There's no getting around it. And for the second part, he's kind of giving more kind of spiritual idea instead of like physical directions as to what each of these words mean. For above is blind belief. So if you're going above after you die, obviously that is referencing heaven. You go to some sort of afterlife up there. Blind belief is a reference to faith. You know, coming from someone who was raised in the Bible Belt, faith is all about, you know, you don't have proof, you don't have concrete evidence, but the part of faith is dealing with that doubt and you believe even with doubt that something exists. And with faith does kind of come this blind belief. And that is what Tyler is referencing here. Blind belief is faith that someone will go to heaven after they die and go above. And under is sword to sleeve. Now, obviously you can interpret this a couple different ways. You can go under if you're thinking about Christianity and there's an up 
and a down. But I think Tyler here is talking about something that isn't an afterlife. You just go under, you go in the ground. You don't go above, you don't go anywhere. You just go in the ground. And sword to sleeve is that he's putting his weapon away and it means to surrender. I'm just surrendering that there is nothing and I'm just giving up and I'm going under. And last but not least, we have around is a scientific miracle. So obviously if someone does not die, that would be a scientific miracle because there's no getting around it. So let's pick above and see. So in this part, Tyler is picking the option that there might be an afterlife. Of course, he can't believe that we will live forever and he's not accepting that there isn't the possibility of an afterlife. So he's choosing this idea of faith. Is there something beyond the grave? For if and when we go above, the question still remains. Are we still in love and is it possible we feel the same? And that's when going under starts to take my wonder, but until that time, I'll sing this. Now, this section of the song, Tyler is questioning what it's gonna be like in the afterlife. If we go above, if there is something past this life, what is that going to be like? Tyler is questioning what our very soul is going to be like in the afterlife. Will we be who we were on earth or will we be something else? Will we remember the people that we had in this life or will we just forget that and be a clean slate again? And that's when going under starts to take my wonder, but until that time, I'll sing this. So obviously Tyler is getting wrapped up in the thoughts of is there an afterlife? And if there is, what does that entail? Who are we going to be? And what is that like? And the last line before the chorus, until that time, I'll try to sing this, is kind of what this whole song is about. It's referencing that Tyler is distracting himself, keeping himself distracted, keeping his mind busy so he doesn't have to think about death until it happens. Now, as Tyler has talked in the past, art is a way for him to deal with these emotions. So I think kind of in another sense, in a more literal sense, and we'll get into the lore here in a second, Tyler is talking about using music as a way to distract himself, as a way to cope with these ideas. But as we move into the chorus, we start to dive into what this means for the lore. So let's get into it. If I keep moving, they won't know. I'll morph to someone else. What they throw at me is too slow. I'll morph to someone else. I'm just a ghost. Me too. Groovy ghost, actually. That was stupid. <laughs> I'll morph to someone else. Defense mechanism mode. Now, morph to someone else might be Tyler talking about if I keep changing myself and I keep evolving, if I keep taking on these different lives, death won't ever catch up with me. To what I think it means in the lore is seizing. I think death in this scenario is obviously referring to Dima, the bishops, and completing vialism. And Clancy does not want that, so in order to stay away from all of that bad, he is seizing people. As we know from the Overcompensate music video, Clancy is taking over bodies to basically teach the citizens of Dima from the inside how to rebel against Dima. And so I think as he's changing, as he's morphing into different people, he's staying away from Dima. His actual physical body is outside of Dima, so obviously there's some distance there, but also if he's constantly changing who he is in Dima, if he's constantly like possessing people and changing how he looks, Obviously, that's going to be hard for the bishops to keep up with who he's going to be and what he's going to look like. I'm just a ghost. This might refer to Clancy's spirit, whatever you want to call it, possessing another body. That does seem very ghost-like, you know, possessing people. Defense mechanism mode. Now, this goes back into what I said. I think the kind of more literal thing is this is how he deals with the concept of mortality. He'll always try to stop me, that Nicholas Borbaki. He's got no friends close, but those who know him most knows he goes by Nico. He told me I'm a copy. When I'd hear him mock me, that's almost stopped me. Now, here was a big one when this song dropped because Tyler finally said the name Nicholas Borbaki, who is blurry face and is the head bishop in charge over Dima. He told me I'm a copy. When I'd hear him mock me, that's almost stopped me. Now, I think this is referring to Tyler himself taking on the role as blurry face. Nicholas Borbaki or Nico is blurry face, but so is Tyler. Nicholas might be telling Clancy, you're no better than me. You are me. You are an extension of me. When I hear him mock me, that's almost stopped me. I think this is in reference to 
a lot of stuff that we hear in 21 Pilot songs. In a lot of 21 Pilot songs, you can hear like a pitched down version of Tyler, either clearly or in the background, like backing vocals. Obviously this deeper voice represents blurry face and kind of represents that he's always there, always lurking in the back of his mind. All of those dark thoughts are always just kind of present in Tyler's life when he tries to ignore it. We're surrounded and we're hounded. There's no above or secret door. What are we here for? If not to run straight through all of our to our mentors, but until that time, I'll try to sing this. So again, we're surrounded and we're hounded. There's no getting around Dima, there's no getting around Blurry Face, there's no getting around Death. There's no above or secret door. What are we here for? So in true 21 Pilots fashion, Tyler is questioning that faith, questioning that is there an afterlife? If there's no above, what are we here for? What is our purpose if no afterlife? But that what are we here for kind of doubles with the line after that, with that if not to run straight through all of our tormentors. So life is all about facing scary things, right? That's how we grow, that's how we change. We would never change and grow as people if we never did the things that we were afraid of. In a more literal sense, we can talk about all the things that are haunting Tyler Joseph, but I think lore-wise, he's talking about Dima. Clancy knows eventually he is going to have to face Blurry Face, going to have to face the bishops and everything that comes with that. But once again, he's saying, until that time, I'll try to sing this. Much like his thoughts with death and his mortality, he is distracting himself from the things that he has to face. In this case, Clancy is kind of postponing that final confrontation with Dima. And this goes a lot with what we see in the Trench era. Uh, Clancy spent a lot of time in the Trench era just trying to escape Dima and get with the banditos. There wasn't a lot of let's rebel and finally fight these guys. It was just like, I want to get out of here. It wasn't until the Clancy era that we really see Clancy step into who he's supposed to be and step into this role of leading a rebellion and finally taking down Dima. But Morph was obviously on Trench and Clancy is not yet ready to face Dima. So he is instead morphing to someone else. Again, the core happens again here and I think it is kind of that idea of seizing and being someone else and always running away from Dima and these feelings and not wanting to face it in a weird coping mechanism sort of way. Lights they blink to me, transmitting things to me. Ones and zeros, ergo this symphony. Anybody listening? Ones and zeros. Count to infinity. Ones and zeros. There's a couple things here. Lights themselves blinking. I want to think about stranger things but it is a very paranormal way to communicate. If you think about like these ghost TV shows like with the flashlight and it's like turn that light on like once for yes and twice for no like ghosts like turning on and off lights. That might be what Tyler is referencing here this idea of like an afterlife or ghosts or some sort of sign that there is something beyond death communicating to him. Ones and zeros ergo the symphony. Ones and zeros is binary code computer stuff that I know nothing about. Anybody listening ones and zeros count to infinity ones and zeros. Now this might be Tyler communicating with something that he doesn't know if there's anybody on the other side. In terms of a literal meaning, this might be Tyler looking for evidence that there is life beyond death, looking for a sign that something exists, looking for proof that something is beyond our lives. In a more lore-centric uh, interpretation, this might be Clancy communicating to the banditos, trying to find someone out there to save him, might be trying to get the attention of the torchbearer, I mean I would too, look at him, calling out for help and trying to find someone. Now the rest of the song are parts that I I have already went over and of course it ends with not done, not done, Josh done. Which is fun and silly but maybe the not done's represent I'm not done, I can't run from this forever. Eventually Clancy's gonna have to step up and fight Dima, which obviously he is at the end of the Clancy era. And Josh Dunn, just because Josh Dunn, why not? So there you go. That was my attempt to make sense of Morph by 21 Pilots. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to join the Groovy Graveyard, and I will see you in the next one.